Welcome to Shifting Grades. We are going to revise the KCSC examination physics paper 1, which was done by the 2020. Therefore, I will start with question number 1. I will be reading the question and where necessary I write it. Then we see the possible answers for each question. Number 1. The question says, the diameter of a wire is measured as 2.4 millimeters. Then you are asked to name the instrument. That was used to measure this diameter. To measure this diameter. I'm given a mark for that. <clears throat> Therefore, when you check this diameter, it is in two decimal places and in the units. Therefore, the only instrument used to measure diameters in millimeters and to two decimal places is the micrometer screw gauge. The micrometer screw gauge. So here, the accuracy of the measurement which is in two decimal places and the units used to record the diameter are helping us to know that the instrument which was used is a micrometer screw gauge. If we had the measurements in centimeters, then we could have concluded that the instrument used is a vernier calipers. But because it is millimeters, then the apparatus or the instrument used is the micrometer screw gauge and you get a mark for that. Let me go straight to number two. The question says that the figure one shows a capillary tube dipped in mercury in a beaker. Therefore, I will just draw the diagram for you. We have a beaker which contains some mercury. Then inside the mercury we have a thin capillary tube. We have a capillary tube which is dipped inside the mercury. So this is mercury. This is the capillary tube. Then we have a beaker here containing the mercury. We have the beaker there which contains the mercury. State with a reason the observation that would be made. State with a reason. State with a reason the observation. That would be made that would be made on the level of mercury on the level of mercury in the capillary tube If the temperature of mercury is increased, if the temperature of mercury is increased, stating the observation and giving the reason was awarded two marks. Therefore, we will start by giving the observation, which will be seen when the temperature of this mercury is increased. 
and the observation is that the level of mercury rises in the capillary tube. So you get a mark for stating the observation. They're now giving a reason for that. We'll earn you the second mark. Let's account for this observation. Uh, we know very well that increase in temperature lowers the cohesive forces of any given liquid, therefore, or substance. For this matter, we have a liquid mercury. Therefore, liquid mercury with increased temperature lowers the cohesive forces. And therefore, it is cohesive forces which are very strong in mercury, which make the level of mercury in the capillary tube to be as low as possible. Therefore, when cohesive forces are lowered by increasing temperature, then it means that because the cohesive forces are now weaker, or they are weakened, then now the adhesive force between mercury molecules and the capillary tube is going to increase and therefore that will make the column of mercury to rise up in the capillary tube. Therefore we say that uh, heating or increasing temperature increasing temperature lowers or weakens the cohesive forces between or the cohesive forces in the mercury molecules mercury molecules of course this now makes the adhesive forces so adhesive forces between the mercury and the capillary tube increases leading to an increase or to arise leading to a rise in the mercury level in the capillary tube. The capillary tube. Therefore, the question is trying to to ask about the factors affecting cohesive forces. Therefore, if increase in temperature is there, then cohesive forces will be lowered and that makes adhesive forces a bit stronger now and uh, with that then the mercury level will increase in the capillary. So that is what's required for the number two. We can check question number three which says state the kinetic theory of gases. Number three state the kinetic theory of gases the kinetic theory of gases okay generally we know the kinetic theory of matter which says that matter is made up of tiny or small particles which are in constant random motion and for this case the examiner has specified kinetic theory of gases which means you will not just state kinetic theory for matter which is very general now we be specific to gases and we just state that gases are made of gases are made of tiny or small or invisible invisible particles particles which are in which are in constant 
random motion which are in constant random motion so you are and not the general kinetic theory of matter so if people wrote about the kinetic theory of matter they were not being awarded the one mark. so with that we can now go to number four where we have a diagram the figure two shows the scale of a measuring instrument therefore we have a measuring instrument here which has been drawn for us a measuring instrument or just projected so that everybody can see it so this is the the measuring instrument you can see the arrow where it is pointing you can also try to read the scale that after one unit to get to the other unit there are four divisions four divisions therefore we are told part a to determine the reading indicated the reading indicated therefore i'll just extract the part where being questioned from unit eight we have one two three four divisions we get into 10 now think of a 10 then we are told that an arrow is pointing here at the third the third mark and it is written copy small letter a those are the units of this measuring instrument then we are told to determine the reading indicated determine the reading part a the reading indicated determine the reading indicated okay when you try to interpret the scale here we are saying from 8 to 10 we have four equal divisions which means for every four we have two units two units then this tells us that if the arrow is pointing at the third mark from unit 8 then we can say three division will represent three multiplied by two divided by four and we will get 1.5 units therefore from 8 we are adding one and a half units and this will give us nine point five units and the units of measurement for this instrument are capital P small letter A which is called the Pascal which is called the Pascal therefore 9.5 Pascal Pascal then a P is telling us to state the physical quantity quantity state the physical measured by this measured by this instrument by this instrument okay the instrument is a pressure gauge it's now we are told to state the physical quantity which is being measured therefore because we can see the units which are indicated in the instrument and that is capital P small letter A the abbreviations of Pascal then you should know that the Pascal is the units of pressure and pressure becomes the quantity being measured here so the answer is pressure other units which could have led the answer to be pressure can be things like Newton per meter squared or centimeters of mercury, sometimes millimeters of mercury. Therefore, all these units can interpret the
the physical quantity to be pressure. So that is what was required for question number four. Let me go to question number five, which again has a diagram. And I will draw it. The figure three below shows a traditional stool resting on a level surface. So let me just project the, the diagram for you so that you can see it. This is a traditional stool which is resting on a level ground. And now we answer some questions. The diagram. Identify the state of equilibrium. So if the diagram is this way, if the diagram is like that, and we are to state or identify the states of the, the state of equilibrium. So the state of equilibrium indicated here is the stable equilibrium. The stable equilibrium and part B we are told to state the reason for the answer in A above. State the reason for the answer in A above. Okay, why are we saying that this is stable equilibrium? We know there are only three types of equilibrium. Equilibrium we usually say that or the object is slightly displaced by applying some force here. If the state is stable, that object to come back to its original position when the force is withdrawn. And in this case, according to the shape of this base, you find that the line of action of the COG, the line of action of the center of gravity of this stool, will still be acting within the area because the area is a bit broad. And therefore, even if we displace this stool and we withdraw the force, that stool is going to come back to its original position. And therefore, the state is going to be stable. If the area was very small, such that, such that uh, after this blessing, if the area was something small, such that when we apply a force here, the stool topples over, then we would have said that the, the state of equilibrium is unstable. But for this case, according to the bigger or the broader base area, we can see that after this blessing slightly the stool, it will still come back to it. Therefore, it is stable. So that is the explanation for part B, whereby you're supposed to say that when displaced, when displaced by applying some force, the line of action, the line of action Will still, will still remain within the base, within the base which has a broad area. Therefore, if if an object has a broad base after displacing it. The line of action still remains within that big area and that means that after withdrawing the force of displacement then number six we have a 
figure here, we are told the figure 4 shows a uniform rod AB of length 1 meter and weight 8 newtons pivoted at 20 centimeter mark from one end. It is balanced by supporting it with a string attached to a fixed support. Then you are told the tension in the string is 4 newtons. Determine the position of the string from end A. Determine the position of the string from Therefore, this is the setup. This is, we are told it is one meter long. Then mark it is being pivoted. At the 20 centimeter mark, it is being pivoted. Then after that, we are also told that it is supported from the other end by a string which is attached to a strong support. And we have a string here. This is a string. That is a string. It is a string. Just indicate that that is a string. This is end B and this is A. Then we are taught to determine the position of the string. This is a question from equilibrium and also the turning effect of a force. Therefore, the solution to it, we are going to say first, because we are given the weight of this, the weight of this uh, rod, because it's equilibrium, the weight is acting through the center is 50 centimeter back because we are told it is one meter long therefore is the point where the weight of is going to act through and the weight is eight newtons therefore we are told the rod ab of length one meter eight acting through the center. So now we apply the principle of moment, which is also called the law of lever, which states that the sum of anti-clockwise moments equals to the sum of clockwise moments. The sum of clockwise moments. is the tension on this string and the examiner has given us that the tension on the string is 4 newtons therefore we will have 4 newtons acting upwards and the distance from this point of support or the pivot if this is at if this is at 20 centimeters and where it is acting upwards is a distance which is not known then we can label it distance x so we can say from the pivot up to where the string is attached all this distance is x so if we call it x then we will say the anti-clockwise moment is due to a distance x times a force of four newtons which will be equal to sum of clockwise moments and we also have only one force for clockwise moments and that is the weight of the object itself which is 8 newtons acting through the center and the center is 50 centimeter mark the point of support is 20 centimeter mark this means that from the point of support to where the force is acting downwards is 30 centimeters therefore this is a 50 centimeter mark 
5 volted 20 centimeter mark so the distance between where the force is acting and where the object is supported is 30 centimeters therefore now we can relate this 4x equals to 240 this will give us x as divide by 4 1 by 4 we'll get 60 centimeters therefore it means that from 20 to where the string is attached is 60 centimeters after getting 60 centimeters remember we are determining the position of the string from end a so the string is 60 centimeters from the point of support so now from point a from point a the string will be at 60 plus 20 because a itself is at zero and the point of support is 20 centimeters therefore this will be the 80 centimeter position or you can just write in SI units 0 0.8 meter mark that is where the string is attached so that is how the question had to be approached okay that is number six we can now check what number seven required what number seven required define cohesive forces number seven seven define cohesive And uh, the direct definition of cohesive forces is the force of attraction between or particles or atoms of the same kind or the same type or atoms of the same material so you can mention either the force of attraction between molecules of the same type or of the same kind molecules of the same material so that is the definition of what coercive forces are then I will give question number eight. Question number eight, which is asking two similar containers, two similar containers, A and B, are filled with equal masses. Are filled with equal masses. Of water at the same temperature. Two containers A and B are filled with equal masses of water at the same temperature. Then you are told container A is made of copper, container A is made of made glass is made of glass then you are told it is then supplied it is then supplied it is then supplied to the containers at the same rate to the containers At, at the same rate so we have two containers here A and B which are filled with equal masses at the same temperature then we are told A is made of copper of glass heat is then supplied to the containers at the same rate then we are told to state with a reason state with a reason State with a reason the container is 
in which where water boils fast. Okay, let me clean the board. These are two containers. One a B of glass. And we know the nature of these two substances. We know that copper is a better conductor when compared to glass. <clears throat> Even though the glass container will finally warm the water, we know that copper is a good conductor and heat will go to the water or be conducted to the water at a faster rate than in the glass. <clears throat> Therefore, we can say container A is where Container A is where boiling is going to take place first. Stating that we go ahead to account for our response, why are we saying conductor A? Container A that is. A is made of copper. And copper, or which is a good. As it transmits or it conducts heat at a faster rate, at a faster to the water than container. is a poor conductor so since glass is a poor conductor it will need it itself fast to be heated up then now heat will start but glass or straight away but the material made of copper which is a container a will directly start conducting it to the water because it is a good conductor therefore boiling will take place first in container a that is what was required. Eight. Let's check number nine. Number nine has a diagram. The question says this. The question says the figure five is blown. Therefore, we have a roof here and wind is blowing over. So, some wind blows over. Therefore, we have a roof. Then, wind blows over heat. Wind blows. Then, now, we are told it was observed that when the speed of the wind increased, the roof was blown off. Explain this observation. When the speed of wind was increased, therefore, I will go straight to the explanation to account for that observation, which says that after the speed of wind increases, this roof is going to be blown off. Explanation. Explanation. We should note that Bernoulli's effect, Bernoulli's effect says that speed of a fluid, a fluid is either a gas or a liquid, is inversely proportional. Proportional to pressure. 
Therefore, when pressure, when speed of a fluid increases, the pressure has to decrease, and vice versa. When the speed is low, pressure is high. In this roof, is that uh, wind blows at a very fast rate. So when the speed of the wind is increased, we should know that pressure above the roof then goes down according to Bernoulli's effect. Therefore, we say increase in the speed. So the issue here is the speed or the velocity of the wind above the roof results to or leads to a decrease in pressure. The roof in the region above the roof. Therefore, the increased speed of wind above the roof leads to decrease in pressure. That is according to Bernoulli's effect. It will lead to a decrease in pressure in the same region. And therefore, it means now pressure below the roof becomes greater. Therefore, the pressure, mostly the atmospheric pressure, pressure above the roof becomes greater, leading an upward force hence the roof is blown off hence the roof is blown off therefore the roof gets blown off because of increased velocity of wind which creates a low pressure zone above the roof and that leads to the pressure below the roof becoming greater, then it leads to an upward force which will henceforth lead to the blowing off of the same roof. Number 10. Ten is a is a question from linear motion. That is book three topic one. The figure six shows a velocity time graph of the motion of a stone thrown vertically upwards. Therefore, we have a graph here. Just going to sketch it. Then we see how to interpret it. Meters per second. And on the other side, we have time in seconds. Then we are told that uh, say this is 10, this is 20, this is 1, this is 2. Then we have a very straight line here. Okay. So we know that... Uh, Okay, let me first of all give the question. From the graph, determine maximum height reached by the storm. From the graph, determine the maximum height reached by the storm. We can uh, use several interpretations to, to handle this question. But say, uh, the first one I'd like to apply, we know that when a velocity time graph is plotted, covered is given by area under the graph. Area under the graph. And in this case, we have the graph in 
a triangular shape whereby the units in the vertical axis which will give us our height is from 0 to 20 therefore we will use the formula for getting the area of a triangle which is half times height we have 20 units in the vertical axis multiplied by the base so in the horizontal axis we have two units when you simplify this you get 10 20 meters meters as the distance traveled again when you try to interpret this graph you discover that this particle or this it is a okay a stone yeah this stone has been released and it has started when the velocity is 20 therefore we can say that the initial velocity is 20 meters square or meters per second then it you go until the velocity is zero so final velocity is zero meters per second and that has happened within a time interval of two seconds therefore with this you can say that uh, there are several equations for linear motion and uh, one of them is the equation which says that velocity final squared equals to initial one squared minus 2gh whereby g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the height in this case we are using a minus because the stone is going downwards if it was projected upwards we could have used a plus and therefore we can say that the initial velocity because we know it is 20 and the final is zero we can now okay within 20 seconds and we know that g due to gravity is 10 kilograms or 10 newtons per kilogram sorry 10 newtons per kilogram then we can substitute and remain with only one unknown which is the height therefore we say zero squared the final velocity equals to the initial squared which is 20 squared minus 2 multiplied by 10 then times the h which is covered by the projected stone so 0 equals to 400 minus 20 h so we can take negative 20 h on the other side this will give us 20 h equals to 400 so h equals to 20 meters therefore alternatively we can follow this approach we will continue with the paper we are going to reach there for the time being kindly subscribe to shifting grades and thank you